Okay, so for this video, blue on blue is very appropriate. What up everyone? It's Stephen, and thank you for joining me on another week of in real life-ness, I, I guess. Before we start, I just want to say thank you to everybody who greeted me in my last video. Happy birthday. Thank y'all so much. I, it still hasn't hit me that I'm two decades old, but that, that's fine. So for today, we're gonna talk about something that I think a lot of people know, or if they don't know about it, they at least know someone who's obsessed with it. I think I even called it the next Hamilton on Twitter, and I think that's pretty accurate. So, so for today, we're gonna talk about this show. And yeah, I have a playbill. I live halfway around the world, and I have a playbill. Yup, it's still all of them. See, it's still all of them there. That's awesome. Okay. Specifically, I want to say what my top five, because there are barely any songs, what my top five songs are, because if you haven't already listened to the soundtrack, it is so, it's so good, obviously. I wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't good, but it's, it's more than that. It's so different. It's so like pop, but like still musical. Like, you know, like when you're driving, like on a road trip, you could listen to some of those songs, like that kind of vibe. It's just a, it's just really good music. And then I had to check why. So I checked who wrote the music and then duh, it's the people who wrote La La Land. So obviously I would like it. I mean, duh. So here we go. My five favorite songs from Dear Evan Hansen. Number five, For Forever. You know, okay, the end, the, the, the latter part of the song is okay. But the first part where they, all we see is sky. That part is so nice. Like, the only thing is though, I couldn't get the context of the song until I had to read the plot. But with even without the context, it's still a pretty good song. Like, it's something you listen to like when you're like, at least the first half. It's something you listen to like when you're like, walking through a park or something. And then, all we see, it's, it's so good. Number four. Wait, what's the name of the song? Wait, one sec. I do not remember the name of the song. Oh my god, but I can hear it in my head. I can hear it in my head. It's in my head right now. Only Us. Oh my god. It's so sweet. It's like, I don't want to say it's like Satisfied, because Satisfied was she didn't get the guy. But like, it has the same mood as Satisfied, but like, if you intersected Helpless and Satisfied, and then made it a lot like, less aggressive. That, that's the song. It's so good. I mean, you know how when sometimes you have like one song from a particular album that you just keep listening to over and over again? This was my that song for like the past week for me. I don't know why. It's just that good. And I just realized I want to include more than five. So I'm gonna cheat here and put two tied for number three, okay? The two songs tied for number three are You Will Be Found, The End of Act One, and the one sung by... Um, Evan's mom towards the end of act one. You will be found is just so like, especially the ending, it, it, it swells and it builds the same way that non-stop in Hamilton does. So it's like, it really builds and builds and builds and then it just explodes in the end and it's just so awesome. And then for So Big So Small, this was the counterpart for me of, do you know that song in Hamilton where he was just kind of, where Hamilton was about to die and then he was just monologuing the whole time. So Big So Small had the same effect on me that I remember I was crying to So Big So Small when the first time I heard it. And same thing also for that song in Hamilton, that inner, that in, internal monologue song. For me, it's the most emotional and like stab my heart and like take it and rip it out and stuff song in the whole album so that's why i like it so much number two number two anybody have a map i know this night i know not placing it at number two is like gonna be so weird for most of you because it's not even like the deepest song it's the first song it's basically like the song that acts as like oh these are the characters oh this is the blah, 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 blah. but it's so you have to admit it's the music is is really good and it's so catchy I mean the whole chorus like it just gets stuck in your head really well I love that song so much and obviously I think you all know what the number one song is this number one song is basically the wait for it of this you know of this is this musical like it's the one that I can see becoming popular outside of the musical in a way and it, it has become popular outside of the musical and that is waving through a window the first time I heard this out you know like Anybody have a map? I was like, oh, this is nice, but it didn't sell me out on Dear Evan Hansen. This song, the second I heard it, it sold me on the whole thing. And I was like, oh my god. Especially the bridge the, when you're falling in a forest. I was like, oh, it's so smart. I mean, just everything about this song, like just like how it just expresses what the heck he was going through. It's just so catchy. Oh, and it's just so good. And it has the same emotional impact that Wait For It did, and I think that's why I liked it. So, that is still... 
my favorite song from this album. And with that, that is our video for today. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like, then click the subscribe circle or the like button down there. Also, my other videos are here and my social media stuff, I think, is down there. So yeah, till next time, guys. See ya!